In this video, we're going to implement some recursive prolog rules. The first rule we're going to implement is this function, f of 0 is 0, f of 1 is 2, f of 2 is 3, and then f of n is 2 times f of n minus 2 plus f of n minus 1. And you'll notice we have three separate base cases. And so all total, we're going to have four prolog rules to implement this function. So I'll write a comment with the mathematical formula that we're trying to implement here. And our first base case, 0 evaluates to 0. And I'll put a cut here at the end, which just says, when you get to this point, stop. If we have a 1, that's going to evaluate to 2. 2 is going to evaluate to 3. And that takes care of these first three rules. So now my recursive rule is going to take any other value that's not 0, 1, or 2. And it's going to return s, which is some solution. So the first thing I need to do is calculate n minus 1 and n minus 2. Then I'm going to calculate f of n minus 1 to get s1. And then finally, now that I have f of n minus 1 and f of n minus 2, I'm going to combine those together to get my actual solution. So s is going to be s2 times 2, because s2 is f of n minus 2, plus s1, which is f of n minus 1. So let's consult our file and test our code. And since SWI is already open, I'll just say to consult. I could also double click the file and explore if I wanted to. So no errors. So there's zero, one, two, and three should give us two times n minus one, so four plus three, which is f of n minus two, which is seven. And so it looks like our function works. And we can try it with a large number just to see. So there's an example of implementing a, math, a recursive mathematical function in Prolog. Now let's do a recursive list rule. So here I have a list. And I'm going to censor some values in this list. So here in this original list, I'm going to censor any value that's 2 or 5. And then I have some result. So then what I'm expecting as output is I want it to unify x with the list 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 with 2 and 5 replaced by the word censored. Now these don't have to be numeric values. They could be any atom. And then we would have this would be a list of atoms that I want censored in my original list. So let's see how we would implement that function. So my base case, if I have an empty list, it doesn't matter what I'm censoring. My output is going to be an empty list. So now I have two cases to consider. The first, I have a list with a head and a tail. I have some list of censored vowels. We'll say censored values. We'll spell it out. And then if this head is in this list, before I put the output statement, let me check to see, is H a member of censored values? And if it is, then for my output, I want to put censored here. And since I'm getting to kind of some long lines, let me move that to the next line. So I'm going to put censored, and then the tail of my result list is going to be the result of passing the tail to the sensor function. Again, I'm passing the same sensor values. Notice I don't really care what those are. I'm just passing those as a parameter. And in this case, now I've censored the tail. And then I'll put that result, which is T1, as the tail of my result. So if H is a member of the censored values, I'm going to replace it with censored in my output. And then I make a recursive call on the tail. 
for the case where H is not a member, I'm actually going to copy this first rule, except I'm going to ignore the member query. And the reason is, is that I know at this point, H is not a member of censored values. So I'm going to put H back on the list. I'm going to still make my recursive call on the tail and put the H value, which now in this case is not a member. And I'll append that to the head of the result of censoring the tail. So let's test our code. So here's the example we saw before, and you'll see that it censors those. And again, those don't have to be numbers. So here it censors three, B, and world. Okay, so now let's look at factorial. And let's go ahead and implement this. So for factorial, our base case is one. Factorial of one is one. And my recursive case We're going to calculate n minus 1. We're going to find the factorial of n minus 1. And then we're going to multiply n times f1 to give us the factorial. So this is n times f minus 1 factorial. And again, we use is for assignment in prolog, not the equal sign. And just to make sure that this rule works, I'll say that n has to be greater than 1. And so if you pass in a negative, this will fail because it won't unify with this rule and here it'll fail. And so uh, that way we won't calculate the factorial of a negative number. So let's see if this works. And we have an operator priority class. And that's because here I need a period. Much better. So just trying a couple of these and this all looks correct. So we can assume that that's correct. Now let's see what this is doing at a high level. Now we're not going to trace this with prolog, but we are going to see sort of the logic of how this particular algorithm works. So we start off, if we're going to find factorial of four, then we need to find factorial of three and multiply four times that. Well, factorial of three is three times factorial of two. Factorial of two is two times factorial of one. Factorial of 1 is 1. So now I unroll those multiplications. I multiply 2 times 1 to get 2. Then I multiply 3 times 2 to get 6. Then I multiply 4 by 6 to get 24. But you'll notice I have to do a bunch of work and then I have to unroll it. Another thing I can do is I can carry my answer along with me so that when I'm done with the recursion, when I reach the base case, I have the solution. And the way I do that is I add a new parameter that keeps the solution. So the solution is going to be a parameter. So for fact one, I'm going to call the rule fact for one. And the reason for that is if this is one, the result is one. So that's going to be my base case. So factorial for one is going to call factorial of three and it's going to multiply n times whatever this is. So three with four times one, which is four. Now that's going to call fact of two with three times four, which is 12. That's going to call factorial of 1 with 2 times 12, which is 24, which is going to be my base case because n is going to be 1 in this case. So my result is going to be 4. So you'll notice that's much more efficient. I don't have to unroll all of those computations. I'm actually bringing my result forward with me. And we call this tail recursion because the Recursive call is the last thing I do in the function. I do all of my calculations before I actually make the recursive call. So let's see what this looks like in Prolog. And the first thing I want to do is if you call factorial tail and you want me to put it in F, I'm going to call a rule with three parameters so that I can bring that parameter forward, starting with one. So my base case will be one. And in that case, whatever rule I'm bringing forward is the solution. So I'm done. Now my recursive case is going to be a little more complicated. I have n. I have my partial solution and f, which is my final solution, which I won't know until I actually unify with the base case. So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to get n minus 1 because I should be greater than one at this point. 
And just to be sure, just like we did before, I could say n is greater than one, just to ensure that none of this happens unless n is greater than one. So it'll handle negative numbers correctly. So now my next partial solution is going to be partial solution times n. So I'm multiplying the, the first parameter by whatever I have so far. And again, remember, I start that off with one. Then I make my recursive call with n minus one my next partial solution, and f, which is my ultimate solution. So you can see what I'm doing is, as I make each successive recursive call, I'm decrementing from n, but I'm multiplying n times that partial solution. So whatever n is gets multiplied by the previous partial solution, and then I subtract n, or 1 from n. So you can almost think of we're calculating the factorial here starting the same way you might do with pencil and paper, because I'm actually, if for example, with factorial of 4, I'll say factorial of 4, times factorial of three and so forth. So let's test this to make sure that it works. And you can see that factorial tail gives us the same result. And we can try some others if we wanted just to make sure. And it looks like that works good. Let's also try our base case, which is one. And again, if I try zero, it fails because it can't handle any integer less than one. So there's four examples of recursive functions, including an example of a tail recursive function. Again, tail recursion is more efficient. However, usually non-tail recursive code is a little clearer as far as what's happening. So it really is up to you which one you choose to use, unless of course on an assignment, it specifies use tail recursion or non-tail recursion. But the key thing to take away from this video is that we can write recursive rules in Prolog that allow us to compute anything we can compute recursively.